All right, well, praise the Lord. We made it to church this morning. How many of you are excited? Amen. Amen. Let's stand and go before the Lord. Let's give him the glory and honor that he deserves. Jesus, we come before you right now. We're here to praise you and to worship you and to give you glory and honor that you deserve. God, I want to say that I'm still thankful this morning from the time that you saved me to right now, Lord. There's a reason to rejoice. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm excited to see the face of God, and I'm thankful for the strength that you give me every single day. Every day that I walk with you, Lord, it gets better and better. Glory, glory, hallelujah. I'm thankful for your love. I'm thankful for your kindness. I'm thankful for the warmth of God that has been so good to me and Jesus we just want to say this morning we want you to have your way oh Lord we want you to touch each one that made it here God we're here in your presence we acknowledge that right now we're here to to have a good time in the Lord and to allow you to touch our hearts this morning Jesus this is the the day that the Lord has made and in it I will rejoice. I will rejoice today because, God, you're good, you're wonderful, you're full of mercy and kindness, and it never runs out, Lord. There's a well that never runs out. There's a spring that never stops flowing, and it's the love of Jesus that has been shed abroad in our hearts this morning, and I'm thankful for it, God. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. How many of you are excited this morning? Amen. 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 We're going to get ready to worship the Lord. I'm not sure what's going on with my wife, but she's going to be up here in a little bit. In the meantime, amen. let's grab a hymnal. What's the first song, Reverend? Standing on the promises or send the fire? It would be uh, send the fire. Send the fire. Let's go to 128. Send the fire. Send the fire on page 128. That's the first song. Rev, can you read it, lead it with no music? I think I can. All right, come on, let's do it with no music. Let's just get up here and let's clap along and let's see how it goes. This is going to be good. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're all on the spot now. Ready? Amen. Come on now, girl. Come on. Help. Help. <laughs> Thou Christ of burning sands and flame, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire. Thou blood bought gift today we claim, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire. Look down and see this waiting host, give us the promised Holy Ghost. We want another Pentecost, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire. God of Elijah, hear our cry, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire. He'll make us fit to live or die, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire. To burn up every trace of sin.
the inside to come here to worship. Lift up Jesus. He loves us. We're here. Jesus is here. Yes, so much. Amen. coming Sunday, the Harvest Festival. Now there's a list uh, back there. I think I didn't put a pen next to it, but just get with us after church. You don't have to get with us. Just go read the list. You want to volunteer for something, write your name next to it, all right? We're going to have several events. The back of our car, we already went out and bought a, a thing of hay, all right? It's going to be set up and we're going to, it's going to be done right. We want to do it as, as best as we possibly can for the kids. All right, the whole nine yards, all right? Just nice. Outside. So what, what is it going to be, okay? It's going to be we're going to set up some kind of barrier or flags or cones or something outside. Different events for the kids next Sunday after church. Stick around for at least 30 minutes, all right? We're going to try to move them quick, right? We want to move the kids fast. And so the goal is we're going to give them a bag or a sack, and they're going to fill it up with candy. So at each event... We want them to keep moving, so we're going to say, all right, you got to finish the event, then you get your candy, all right? Mm -hmm. So we'll give them incentive. i got to finish this event, then I go to the next one, and then I go to the next one. Every time they finish something, they get more and more and more candy in their sack, all right? And then the parents, the grandparents, you can deal with them. However, you, if you want to steal candy from a kid, that's your prerogative. That's up to you, all right? If you want to, you want to give them a little bit, lock it up, and... And make it last for the next year, that's up to you as well, all right? I know candy has a long shelf life. It does. It does. It really does. But Or whatever. Maybe let them splurge a little bit. That'll be up to you, but it'll be fun. And so also other things that if you want to, if the adults want to bring something here to eat while the kids are doing it. And also we need adults monitoring the events as well. We want somebody at each thing monitoring it. So... The list is back there. Just get with us after church for it, okay? And there'll be more good things coming around here in New Testament Christian Church of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, all right? We don't want to be stagnant. We want to be looking forward to things. Yes. Might as well share this. That special service that I was mentioning outside, it's a little more than just reserving a pavilion. You can reserve a pavilion on the uh, Sioux Falls Parks and Rec. That's easy. You just do it on the website. But if you want to host a service like I was talking about and all these different things, you have to apply for a special permit. And so I, I talked to somebody about it and they forwarded me to somebody else. And then, you know, that somebody called me, the first person calls me back. And then now I'm waiting for the second person to call me back. And so we'll let you know how it goes and everything like that. But it's, it's still something we want to do. And so just be praying for that. Okay. And as things come out, we'll let everybody know. All right. God is good. Amen? Amen. 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 And the projector. Yes, I was just getting ready. We got a projector. We want to thank you for giving us the projector. All right. Thank you, Sister Lolita. And we're thankful that the church was able to be donated a projector. And so we'll get that put together. Will it be here next week set up? I hope so. All right. We're going to It's gonna take a little bit of work. We don't have the music on slides yet. You know, every every song on a slide but we're going to get it put together i'm going to email some some people it's it's good to be a part of a church organization a part of something or just having brothers and sisters in the lord because we these hymnals they're they're old all right and so that's a good thing pastor what are you saying about old? all right praise god i'm thankful for old people new people young people brand new we love everybody all right don't don't take that the wrong way, but what I'm saying is that it's been around, and so there's people that already have the music on a slide, so if they could just email it to us, and then we'll try to get it set up so that as we sing, you know, Reverend Pugh's going to be, he's going to be going, hey, click next, and he's going to come over here, <laughs> click next, all right, and then it's going to be a little, little dance, if you will, yeah. praise the Lord. But anyway, we're going to get it set up, and it'll be a blessing yes. for different things in the church. Even just looking at Bible scripture, following along, what have you. Yes. Especially, maybe you want to sing along when my wife is singing, right? But you don't know the words. You know, you're maybe you, yes. sometimes if I don't know the words, I'll just kind of hum along and try to figure it out. But it's a lot nicer when you have the words up there, right? Amen. Yes. 
So anyway, this morning I'm going to ask Reverend Pugh, Brother Baker, if you don't mind coming up here, please. We're going to receive. We don't take, we receive because we give willingly as unto the Lord. All right, out of our own heart, we give as unto the Lord. And our prayer is that God will bless you for your giving. Amen. Brother Baker, if you could please pray, sir. Father, thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. Bless the gift and the giver. Let the money go to your needs in your house. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Because the Bible says it. Amen. So God will bless you for your giving. And at this time, we're going to play a special song as unto the Lord.
thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We magnify your name. Amen. Amen. And that comes right out of the Psalms. I don't remember which one it is, but it is almost word for word directly quoting a psalm in the Bible. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. And so this morning, I want to direct our attention to the book of Revelation. That's the last book in the Bible, chapter 3. And I'm not, spoiler alert, not planning to preach end times here or anything like that. Chapters 1 through 3 really had messages to the churches at that time. And in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, we find a message written to the church of Laodicea. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with good works, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as also I overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Mm -hmm. That was quite a message there. Mm -hmm. But I want to look at verse 15 as our text for this morning. And these are the words of Jesus, by the way. Jesus, this is in my Bible. I don't know if you have the red letter Bible. In my Bible, these letters are red. Because this is what Jesus is saying. It's a direct message to each these were actual churches, physical locations where people had a church. And this was the message that Jesus had to this church in this city. Verse 15. One more time. This is what Jesus said. He said, I know that works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. I want to ask Reverend Pew, sir, if you don't mind praying, please. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for your goodness to us. For each one here, Lord God, taking the time to come here to receive something from you, Lord God. Thank you for your presence, for your love, and for the preaching of your word. Have your way. Accomplish your will. Bless Pastor now as he ministers to us your word. Give you all the praise, all the glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. That word, lukewarm, basically means common room temperature. A room temperature type of water, right? It's just kind of Whatever the temperature is around it, it absorbed it, and it became the same thing, whatever it is around it, and it became lukewarm. Assuming that it's mild, normal temperature in the room. You know, the temperature right here in our sanctuary right now, in this church right now, it's, it's pretty, you know, it's okay. It's not too hot, not too cold. So if you left the drink out long enough, whether it was cold, whether it was hot, eventually it'd become the same temperature as the things around it. And... Last night, I was getting a drink. Sister Medea, she said, you know, would you like some ice? I said, thank you. I got some ice, and I put it in my drink. And when you really think about it in general, when you say, oh, I want a drink. You know, I'm going to go out, and I'm going to get Starbucks, or I want to get a maybe a non-alcoholic, like a cocktail or something. My wife loves making, she'll take orange juice, some cider or whatever. I don't even know what she, what do you do? that sparkling water, right? Sparkling water and uh, oh, yes. all kinds of things, right? 
No, non alcoholic, right? Preach is non alcoholic. But really, she likes, you know, flavorful drinks. And usually, when you want something, you say, I'm going to grab a drink, right? What do you either go to the refrigerator or you're going to get something hot, right? I know we drink things lukewarm. People drink a bottle of water, you grab it out of the pantry, right? You drink it. That's fine. That's good and well. Nothing wrong with that. But when you're thinking, like, I want a drink, you usually want something hot. Or you want something cold. It's one or the other. You're not, you're not generally looking for something lukewarm when you think of it in that way. And this is what God is saying here. He said, you're neither hot or cold. You're just, you're neither one. You become whatever it is that's around you. You've become that. And I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but really there's a lot to say here this morning. Again, this was a real, actual, physical church with Christians, people, I don't know who who was there. We don't know much about it besides what's written here right now in the book of Revelation, maybe a few other places where we read of people going by there and whatnot, but we do know that they had some issues in the church. They had become lukewarm. They had become blended with their surroundings. They became blended with their surroundings. They weren't putting forth any energy to keep themselves cold or hot. They became lukewarm. They absorbed the temperature that was around them. Doesn't that sound like what Jesus warned us of? Saying, you know, don't be your... He prayed to the Father. He said, though they're in the world, Father, I pray that you don't take them out of the world, but that they would not be of the world. Because the world and the lust thereof, it passeth away. There's nothing left over. And so it is in this life. We cannot be lukewarm. There are people in life that generally when you look at something like a, a revolution, there's many people that just remain lukewarm during that time. I'm just reading a, a, a book right now in the middle of it, really. But he was talking about the Jacobins going on in France and all these different, the revolution that happened in France. And really most of the people did absolutely nothing. The majority of the population just did, they just sat there and they waited to see and they hoped something better would come out. This is a good example of being lukewarm. They were neither hot, they were neither cold. They didn't speak up when they should have spoken up. I know I was just preaching on it on Thursday night in a similar fashion of how that sometimes people, they just don't find anything in them to speak out in a relationship, in things in life. They just let it go. They're just lukewarm. They just absorb whatever's around them. They're just drifting in the sea, right? They just dump them in the ocean, and pretty soon they, they match the temperature of the ocean. They just get influenced by whatever's around them. They blend it. They've allowed other people to rule their life. It can take just a small little fire to warm up a room or to warm up a car. I keep candles in our car, not because I want light, but because if there's ever, it's a little emergency bag that we like to keep in the car. One of the things that I keep in there is a couple of candles. Again, not because I want light, but because if you close all the doors and you're snowed in and you light up a few candles, believe it or not, it'll warm up that car. It takes a little bit to do a whole lot of a difference. But God's looking for people that are neither lukewarm or room temperature <laughs> all right he's looking for people that are cold or hot do something for god that's what he's saying here but this blending that was introduced into the church they became lukewarm and in order for something to become that temperature to become lukewarm they had to absorb all the temperature that was around them so perhaps they lost their fire for God. We just saying, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire. It's that Holy Ghost fire. We're not backing down from that. Amen. We preach Jesus Christ, yes. crucified, risen again, yes. And we also preach that Jesus commanded them. He said, go to Jerusalem and wait from the power from on high. Yes. And it came down with fire, with cloven tongues. And it's the Holy Ghost baptism. They speak in other tongues. In chapter 10, they yes. speak in other tongues. Chapter 19 or 20 in the book of Acts, they speak in other tongues again. Again. They did it again. All right? That proves to you, that shows you by the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. The Bible said it in several locations. So maybe 
again, I'm just, this is not, I'm not trying to put things in the scripture. I'm saying perhaps they quit preaching about the Holy Ghost. Maybe they lost the fire of God. Maybe the church lost the love of God. And they began to absorb things all around them. They became lukewarm. Let's bring in some things from the world into the church. This, again, this is written to a real church in a physical place where people gathered together here on earth a long time ago. This is not, these are not fairy tales. These are real things. And this is Jesus telling them this is who they are. They've become lukewarm. They're neither cold or hot for God. He said, I would that you were just one. Just pick one. Just be cold or hot for me. Can you just pick one? I often think of, you get people that are religious and they, you know, the lukewarm type. Sometimes those are the hardest people to really get to Jesus where they're truly saved. I would rather preach the God, and I'm not kidding here. I would rather preach the gospel to a sinner who knows they're a sinner. They know their, their heart is cold. They know what they're doing is wrong. Instead of a person who's lukewarm, they want to pretend that they're saved. And yet in their heart, they're just like the world. They've absorbed everything that the world has for them. They're, they know how to blend. They know how to put on a show. They know how to put on an act. They know how to go to church. They know how to go home. They know how to say the right things. But they're lukewarm. Those are some of the most difficult people to point to Jesus because they'll never look in the mirror and say, I need God. I need to really get saved instead of putting on a show. They're lukewarm. That's what they are. They're lukewarm. I'd rather preach the gospel to a person that knows they're not saved. They know they need Jesus because there's just a greater chance. And I've, from my personal testimony, that's how it was for me. When I finally got to that point, God, I'm not saved. That's when I got saved. When I stopped being lukewarm. You know, it takes energy to make something hot or to make something even cold. If you have something that's room temperature, you got to put it in the refrigerator. The refrigerator needs electricity. The electricity needs power. It takes energy to bring something from where it's at to something else. It takes energy. It takes effort on our part. And it takes the power of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, washing away all sin in a person's life to absolutely make them on fire for God. It takes something all right, if a person just stands there and they stay lukewarm, they never go to church, they never pray, they never give their heart to God, they're going to stay lukewarm. It takes some energy. I mean, you got to put that water on the stove. you got to put it in the microwave. you got to do something with it to warm it up. If you just let it sit there for just does nothing, it'll be just like the temperature around it. It begins to absorb the energy all around it. But you know what? I don't want to absorb the things in the world. I don't want to become lukewarm. I don't want to just be whatever's around me. I want to be red, hot, on fire for Jesus. All right, Jesus said, I'm not going to spit out a hot drink. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you could give him a hot cup of tea. It just got done boiling. Put a little tea bag in there. Jesus will drink that thing right up. No problem. It's not going to burn his mouth. He said, if you're lukewarm, that's when I'm going to spit you out. Well, I want to be red, hot for Jesus. I want to be on fire for God. I don't want to be like the world. I don't want to absorb the things around me and try to bring that to church and try to uh, water down the gospel, so to speak, or to bring it to room temperature. We want to be red hot for Jesus. Amen. We want to preach it in truth and righteousness and in love. Oftentimes, people will say, I love you, I love you, I love you, but they never do the things that represent love. They never back up their love. It's one thing to talk about the love of Jesus, but it's another thing to bring up the cross. To say, you know what? He died for us, but for what? What did he die for? He died for our sins. Okay, so if sin was the problem and Jesus died to fix the problem, when the problem is fixed, the sins should be gone. I'm no longer a sinner. I'm a saint. I'm saved by the grace of Almighty God. I didn't deserve it, but you know what? When Jesus came into my heart and into my life, he warmed me up, and I've been hot ever since. Amen? And any time you begin to cool down, get back to the house of God. Yeah. Open up your Bible. Get down on your knees and pray and say, Jesus, I need the Holy Ghost fire. I need you to warm me up. I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to be like the world. I want to be bold. 
I don't want to be influenced by everybody else. Again, back to this book that I'm reading, it's so sad what these people went through in France. All because of certain few individuals that got really hot for the wrong thing. And they made everybody else suffer. It's really no, not a lot different than what you see happening in America today. They went out, they tore down all the public buildings, they tore down anything that told a French history, they, got, they wanted to get rid of the king, they took over public offices, courtrooms, they took over everything that was represented France and their history and all their, their, their courtrooms, their libraries. They took it all over, they burned it all down and they started a revolution. And it didn't take a whole lot of them. And they were the lowest of the lowest of the people. And again, everybody else, what did they do? They just stayed lukewarm. They didn't do anything. They let everybody else influence them. I don't want to be that way in this life. I want to, I'd rather be red hot for Jesus. I'd rather stand up for something. I don't, and I'm that something is Jesus, all right? I mean, let me be clear here. I want to stand up for Christ. I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to just drift along in this world and let, let society influence me. Tell me how to raise my children. Tell me how to... No way. No way. No way. You're not going to tell me how to raise my kid. Nobody has the right to tell me how to raise my child. Especially when I'm raising my child according to the Bible with love and with care. Now brother was just sharing it with me at conference he said now that there's some states have made it illegal but there were kids that they'd go to their teacher and they'd say hey I want to get my gender changed and whatnot and then they would fly them without the parents I don't know how you're able to do this they would fly them from that state to California and give them the gender change in our country in our country years ago Probably five, five years ago, four years ago, not that long ago, but years ago, when we were in another church, the pastor said, pray, he didn't name the child, but he said, pray for this child because the school was giving this, this girl hormone pills without the parents even knowing. And the parents went to church. You're not going to let me, you're not going to tell me how to raise my kid. We're not going to be influenced by the world. We're not. Absolutely not. I'd rather be red hot for Jesus. Amen. People, people get upset about all kinds of, from the littlest things of Christianity to the things that really make sense, like raising your own kid the right way. You know what? Why don't we just stand up for everything concerning God, concerning living right for Jesus? Oh, you never curse. You never do this. You never, yeah, because I'm a Christian. You feel convicted. Good. I don't care. I'm red hot for Jesus. I'd rather live right for God. And live my life holy and righteously and die in a state where I'm right with God than to die and go to hell and to say, you're lukewarm. I'm going to spit you out because you didn't speak up for me. You were just simply somebody that went to church. You said you're a Christian. You claimed it. But when you walked out of those doors, you just went back and you blended with the world. You became lukewarm. No, I want to be red hot for Jesus. I want to be red hot for Jesus. I don't want to waver. I don't want to go back. But I want to live for him in truth and in righteousness. Those that never make a stand, they remain silent. They allow for the things around them to influence them. Instead of being the ones that are the influencers. To influence those that are around them. They are the blind leading the blind, as Jesus said. They are the sheep scattered abroad, abroad without a shepherd. They are the lukewarm individuals. Who do not take a stand for Christ. They are the lukewarm. We don't want to be lukewarm this morning. So then because thou art lukewarm. And neither cold or hot. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now I don't know about you. But that pretty much tells me. That person's not making it to heaven. That's it. I know it's not saying it directly. But I mean what else. What else is it going to mean? If Jesus doesn't accept me, if he doesn't accept me here in this life, how is he going to accept me when I die? What makes me think that being a lukewarm Christian, quote unquote, he's going to accept me? No. I want to be red hot. 
Again, he wrote this to the church, to the church. He wrote this to people that came to church. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with good works and have no need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. America sends out the most missionaries than any other country in the world. Number two, I believe, is South Korea. But we send out the most missionaries out to this world from our own country. And yet you look at America itself right now, and I'm not bashing on America this whole time, but really just see the correlation here. We send out the most missionaries into the world, and most of the time they're not even out there preaching the gospel. They just go, they feed the poor, and they do all these things, which are good. That's all fine and well, but a real missionary preaches the gospel. Amen? When our founder, Pastor Davis, when he went to the Philippines, he didn't give him any food. He didn't do anything. He went and stood on piles of trash and preached the gospel. And that's how now we have a Bible seminary there. He didn't teach them. He didn't give them fish. He taught them how to fish, so to speak. Now we have a seminary in the Philippines where the Filipinos, which that's a poor country, they pay their tithe. They pay their own way through Bible school there, the Filipino Bible school. They build their own church. Now we have Filipino pastors. He didn't go over there and say, we're going to let's send donations over there to feed them. That's fine and well, but that's not a real missionary. He said, thou art rich. You're increased with all these good, good works. Increased in goods and have nothing. You got all these things going on for you. You got all these tall buildings all around you. People in the buildings. Everything going on. Oh, it looks all pretty on the outside, but he said, you're lukewarm. You don't even realize that you're wretched. He said, you're naked and you're blind and you're poor. So he said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. In other words, he's saying you might be rich in this physical present world, but you're poor spiritually. That's what he's saying. Come to me. Say, come to Jesus and get that gold that's been tried in the fire. You know what happens when you put metal through the fire? The dross, all the impure elements, all the elements that are non-gold, they tend to rise up to the top just like you ever boil a piece of meat with bone in it and then you get all that stuff that floats up to the top and you scoop it away or you drain it, you do whatever you have to do. It's the same way with gold, with metal. You begin to burn it up. Try it in the fire and all the impurities begin to rise up to the top. And then the finer begins to scoop it away. He scoop it away. He scoops it away. God said, come to me and get that gold from me that's been tried in the fire. In other words, get the things from me which you need that are useful in the spiritual sense. Don't worry about the physical things on the outside. God will take care of you. Jesus said himself, we were talking about it the other day. He said, I don't have anywhere to lay my head. I don't have anywhere to go to sleep. If you're going to follow me, give up this world and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. Get some Holy Ghost gold tried in the fire. Get some of that spiritual stuff from Jesus that's true, that's real. Oh, I may not see it on the outside, but you know what? When you look at a person's life and you know what they were and you see what they are now, that's a miracle in and of itself. That's that same Holy Ghost fire. That's the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. That's what we need. We need red, hot Christianity. We don't need that lukewarm garbage. We want to be on fire for Jesus. He said, as many as I, I counsel thee to buy of me this gold to be rich in white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. White raiment, a white outer covering representing being pure, pureness, all these things. But some people, they just need to learn how to put on some clothes. Oh, pastor, don't go there. I'm serious. You feel like you go, you go walk around Walmart, you got a teenage boy walking around Walmart or any of these stores go to the mall. I mean, some of the things they got up there, I mean, they're, they're going to be, they're going to be red hot for something else. Why? Because they got all these, and then girls too, whatever, men, men out there posing with their shirts off and their abs, 
walking past Abercrombie and Fitch, right? Over there, they've got a teenage girl walking by just drooling. That same teenage girl goes to church. Her mom goes in the store with her. She buys I me. Mean, come on now. Put on some clothes. Put on some clothes. Put on some white raiment. And when you put it on spiritually, you'll put it on outwardly. That's the thing about it. I've shared it before. I got saved. I ended up throwing away all my extra medium polos. Because every time I lifted my hands in church to worship Jesus, I was embarrassed to lift my hands because you could see my stomach. So I just threw them away and bought new ones. Bought the right size. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's it. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Put an ointment on your eyes. Allow Jesus. Remember what Jesus did to that blind man? He spit in the ground. He made a little bit of mud, a little bit of clay, and he rubbed it over his eyes. And the man began to see. Why don't you let Jesus put some kind of eye salve on your eyes and let you see things for the way that they are? Allow Christ to open up our eyes and let us see the way that things are. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. That word chasten, it means to correct. So if God loves you, you're going to bring things your way to try to get you on the right path. That shepherd, he's got a hook on one side and the other side's a stick, all right? But when he's got to yank that sheep, that sheep's going over there. He's got to yank him back over. He grabs that thing around and he yanks it. He takes the other side and he uses it to hit the sheep to get their attention. Does God sometimes need to get our attention. Oh, he's done it for me plenty of times. I want him to get my attention. I want him to keep it. He said, repent. Repent. Turn around. He's telling them. He's telling the world, turn around. Is there still room for mercy? Oh, yes. It's not all doom and gloom. He said, repent. Turn around. He's telling the world to turn around. Come to me. There's still plenty of room to get right. There's still plenty of room to have revivals here in this city, in America. There's plenty of room for people to get saved. He said, repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I thank God that he still knocks. I thank the Lord that Jesus is still knocking at the hearts of men and women right now. You see, it's not just about the judgment. Yes, that's there. Yes, God wants people to change. But he's still full of mercy and love. He's not giving up on people. He never gives up on you. He's over there knocking. He's saying, hey, hey, let me in. I want to warm you up. Are you tired of being lukewarm? It's kind of getting cold outside. Pretty soon you're going to freeze. Come on now, let me inside. I want to warm you up. Will you let me warm you up? Will you let the Holy Ghost come inside? Will you let Jesus come inside of your heart? He wants to warm you up. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Jesus said, I'm going to come inside of you and I'm going to make my abode with you. Why do we get together for these fellowships and we begin to eat afterwards? Because that's what it means to sup together, to eat together. To do something together, get down together and eat some food. It feels good, doesn't it? It brings that fellowship, that camaraderie. Jesus said, I'll do the same thing. We're going to get together and we're going to sup together. To him that overcometh, we can come to the instruments tonight, this morning. It's morning time. Let's come to the instruments. To him that overcometh, that will grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as also I overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. It's going to be good sitting with the throne of Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's going to share his glory with those that believe in him. The last verse of chapter 3. He said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Anybody out there who's willing to listen, anybody out there who's willing to lend an ear to what Jesus is having to say, he said, listen up. Listen to what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Listen to what God is saying to this church this morning. He's saying, I don't want anybody here to be a lukewarm Christian. I don't want anybody here to, to grow cold for God. But we need to be on fire for God. We need to be on fire for Jesus. If you keep going backwards, if you go backwards, it's no good. 
You gotta go forward. You gotta press toward the mark. You gotta seek him. You gotta want him. You gotta desire him. You gotta get fully just inside of Jesus and Jesus inside of you, just absolutely uh, rejecting the world, absolutely rejecting what all the influences that society has on you, absolutely putting all that trash and that garbage away and being completely on fire for Jesus. He or she that has an ear this morning, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches of God. Let's bow our heads this morning in reverence to God. How about it this morning? Let's examine our heart. Do we need a little warm-up? Don't we always need a little warm-up from God, from the Holy Ghost? Is there a little spot in our life where we feel like we're getting a little lukewarm? Or have we totally forgotten what it feels to be like on fire for Jesus? Why don't we pray this morning? Why don't we just ask God, just ask God, what's wrong with asking God, God, help me to be on fire for you? What's wrong with asking God to say, Lord, I never want to be lukewarm. Jesus, deal with me right now. Whatever you want me to do, whatever you want me to, to go, to say, God, that's what I want to be. I want to be on fire for Jesus. Don't you want to be on fire for Jesus this morning? Let's come and pray this morning. The altar's wide open. Let the fire of God stoke inside of you right now. Come on, you feel those ambers? They're burning in your heart. Blow a little air on those ambers. Add a little wood on that fire. Begin to let it burn in the power of the Holy Ghost. Where you're a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. We can be a consuming fire for Jesus. Everything given over to Him. Let's pray this morning. I encourage you. Come up to the front and pray. There's nothing wrong with it. Just come and pray. Let God deal with you. Let God, let God just consume you. Just give it all to Jesus. Don't worry about anybody else. It's not about them. Be a little selfish. Let's be selfish this morning. Let's say, God, I just want you to warm me up. Warm me up, Jesus. I don't care about anybody else. It's about me. I'm the one that needs to get warmed up by Jesus. Warm me up, oh God. Warm me up, Jesus. I want to be ready.
that believe. Amen. Do you believe in Jesus? Amen. You got the power. Take it with you. Don't leave it at church now. Take it with you. All right. So be praying throughout the week. Be believing. Looking forward to next Sunday. Please do look at that sign-up sheet and see if there's something you can volunteer for and help us out. All right? And as far as uh, getting things, we got the candy covered. She, my wife, she made a list over there of possibly bringing some food for more so probably for the adults. But trust me, there's, there's going to be plenty of candy. All right? That part's covered, so no need to bring any more of that. All right? We'll close out with prayer. I'd like to ask Reverend Pugh, sir, if you can close us out. Lord, thank you again for your goodness. It's time that we can be here together. Family of God, we worship you. We love you. We need you every day, Lord God. Thank you for your faithfulness. Your love. Your hands upon us. Bring us back at the appointed time. Trust me.